Chess databases, as we've said before, are collections of chess games. And that, in essence, is all they are. But where they come in useful to people like you or I is that they are searchable. So today we're going to look at the basics of searching chess databases. So as I say, a database, it's very simple, it's not scary, it's a collection of related information. So a chess database is simply a collection of chess games. There's nothing complicated, there's nothing confusing about a chess database. You can store literally millions of chess games on your computer. But what do you do with that information when you have it? You search it. That's what. So just a few decades ago, what could take literally weeks of searching through hundreds of different printed chess publications can now just take seconds. By studying the games of the past, we can see ideas and concepts and patterns that will be applicable in our own games. So if you're even a little serious about improving your play, a chess database is an essential requirement. So, what can you search for? Well, pretty much any aspect of a chess game. The search function of Chessbase began many years ago as a relatively basic concept, searching for, say, particular players or particular tournaments or particular openings. But now with Chessbase 15, the search feature is amazingly sophisticated. Of course, you can still search by player or the year in which the game was played, but now you can search for things like pawn structures, attacking motifs, peace manoeuvres, and even strategic themes. The possibilities are virtually, virtually limitless. There's a few different ways to search in Chessbase 15. Uh, generally, you're going to be wanting to search your biggest database, as that's the one that contains the most information. Whichever database you plan on investigating, you can do so in, se in several different ways. So from the main Chessbase screen, you right-click on the database that you're interested in. So I'm going to use my mega database, as that's the biggest one I've got. And then you right-click and you click on Search. And that brings up the search window. You can also double-click the database icon itself, which opens the database. We've looked at that before. Um, you can see the list of games here. And then you click at the top on the ribbon, Filter List. Now you'll see it's actually exactly the same win window. So Search and Filter in Chessbase mean the same thing for our purposes. And by default, Chessbase begins by presenting you with this very basic search window which is otherwise known as the single line search input. Often when you're searching within a, a database, only a few very simple search criteria are required. So the basic search allows you the option to enter a few simple words into the box and that will be the basis for your search. There's a few different buttons here. Reset, we haven't done any searches yet, but if you've been searching, then hit reset. It's very useful. Advanced, we'll talk about later. This is the one I want to talk about now, the examples button. It's a fantastically useful resource. It gives you typical samples of the type of search that may be helpful. So if we click on that, you can see just what it is you can actually search for. So player, obviously, they've got the example, just type in Fashila Grav. Player in place, Kramnik. Dortmund, player and result, Kasparov, 1-0, so Kasparov playing white where he wins. Player and game type, Carlsen, Blitz, pairing, Anand Polgar, Elo, so 2,500, Elo in year, 2,500, 2018. You can see, even though it's a basic text search, there's actually a huge amount of things you can search for. So, for instance, if I wanted to, say, study the famous rivalry between Gary Kasparov and Nigel Short, I'd simply type Kasparov... If I could spell properly, and short, Kasparov short, you don't need any quotation marks or anything like that. You just simply type that in the search box and you click OK. So this is start of the search of the mega database, um, which takes only a few seconds on my computer. Uh, and you can see down here on the bottom right hand side, that's the search progress bar. Um, be aware, of course, search speeds are going to vary from computer to computer. 
uh, based on the many different hardware components that you use. So don't be surprised if yours is either substantially slower or even quicker than mine. When the search is completed, if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see how many games have been found. In this particular case, 92 games in my database. And you're presented with a list of these games in the search window, just like you would in a database. You can see they're all Kasparov Short. Kasparov Short playing either white or black. It was just a very simple text search. But we can scroll down that list. And any of one, any of them, you can actually just click on and then play through that game if you want to. So, for instance, if we go to, uh, where's the one I'm going to, I'm going to go to the one from the World Championship where uh, Nigel won, uh, not because I'm, I'm British at all. Um, and obviously you can play through the game then if you want to in the normal way. You could uh, set a kibitzer, an engine that you could use to analyse it. You can basically go through that in the absolutely normal way. You can play through and analyse just in that board window as you would any other game. Now it's important to note that the next time that you open the basic search window, Chessbase 15 will have saved the last search you performed. So let's pretend we've come out of this now. We've finished looking at Kasparov Short. Um, we're planning on searching for something different. So we're going to search. You'll see here Kasparov Short is still in the text box. That's why I said the reset button becomes very useful because if you don't hit the reset button or if you don't delete that text from the box, we'll be searching for Kasparov Short again. So we hit reset, that clears the text box, and then you can search for anything else that you'd like to. So anytime you're doing a different search, click the reset button first. And this basic search window is, I find, incredibly useful and wonderfully efficient. It's very well suited to quick, fun searches or general interest searches, or any kind of non-specific search. If you want to get more complex or refined and sophisticated with your searching, you can bypass the, this basic search window and click on Advanced. You'll see here, this opens the detailed search window, which is the window that you'll be more familiar with if you've used previous versions of Chess-based software. Of course, if you prefer that the um, search, that the program defaults to this feature instead of the basic one, you can actually click here, always advanced dialogue. So now whenever you go into a search, oops, I've just started a search for nothing there, so let me just come out of that. Um, now when you go into a search, you see it's automatically opened the advanced dialogue. Um, this means that in future you'll avoid seeing that basic search window and you'll always now open the classic, the more extensive search window that we're looking at here. Now. <laughs> we'll look at this advanced search window in future videos because it's going to take quite a few videos to attempt to cover everything you can do with this advanced search function. Uh, chess space is simple, but boy, it's sophisticated. Um, but just take, take this away. Searching databases is one of the fundamental functions of chess space 15. Mastering it is essential if you want to set yourself on the path to chess improvement. So I advise you to play around with this uh, search box as much as you can, get used to all these searches, and as I say, we'll look at some at these in more detail in future videos. So in next time, please stay safe and have fun.